Like, you know, we're going to pop in with John Mons and Grandes. I know we can go with John Mons and So today we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. Okay, Mahogany, welcome. And the first thing, you know, we always do is ask people to define it for us, for themselves, before we, you know, obviously we did research in the department and we been talking about being emotionally intelligent just because, you know, we're relationship builders, we fall short and we always got to, you know, refer back to our, our understanding, our knowledge. So, you know, we want to know what does emotional intelligence mean to everybody on the panel, everybody on Facebook, on Facebook. you could write it in the comment section. We may get to read it, we may not based on how the discussion well, we, try, we, we really try hard to get to all our comments. And if not, yeah. we also revisit when we go offline as well. So don't get discouraged. We'll get there. Definitely. So go ahead, whoever wants to take the floor. Yeah, when you think of emotional intelli intelligence, what comes to mind? Well, um, for me, I think it's simple. I think emotional intelligence is pretty much you understanding, um, really being able to understand what you're feeling and identify where those feelings are coming from and um, being able to articulate that. Okay. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? I'm going to just second that. It's, it's the awareness of your own emotions and the ability to express them in a healthy manner. Um, it's understanding the, and then also I think there's a flip side of also being able to understand somebody else's emotions. That wasn't yeah, that, an answer because we just had this conversation. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what I was going to add as well. Um, good evening, everyone, by the way. I, I know I'm kind of late to the party. How you doing? Hi, Drastic. What's going on, Drastic? Hey, what's up? Um, yeah, I, just, I basically was going to say the same as them, is that emotional intelligence is being aware of, being, a, being aware of your own emotions, um, being able to identify them, you know what I'm saying? And and I would, I would also take it a step further to, to say um, it, it, it can also go to, understanding what influenced that emotion, what, what, what events or what circumstance or what particular situation influenced you to feel that particular emotion, as well as being able to read the emotions of somebody else. Like if I come into a room and everybody just finished talking about something sad, I might not have been privy to that conversation, but I should be able to read the vibe of the room to understand that, you know what I'm saying? Now is not the time to be playing or, you know what I'm saying? Something that would uh, deviate away from, you know, the general feeling of, of, of everybody else's emotions. So it's being able to identify your own emotions as well as other people's emotions. Okay, Drastic, yeah. Molly, I seen you raise your hand about a minute ago. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with them also, you know, to control and express the emotions in a, in, in a personal relationship. Wait, I had a family friend. We really try Love hard you. to get to all our comments, and if not, oh, we sorry, also that's me doubling. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, and be empathetic to other people's emotions and feelings, also. Yes, yes. So, all of y'all. I mean, in the beginning, we was we was wondering. Most people think when they talk about emotional intelligence, they're just thinking of themselves, but it's the ability to identify emotions as well. So, you know, there's so many, there's, <clears throat> there's so many definitions out there of emotional intelligence, the capacity to be aware and control and express one's emotions and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. Or you can go with the ability to monitor one's own emotions and others' emotions to discriminate between different emotions and label them appropriately, to use emotional in information to guide, think, and uh, to, to guide the thinking of, and behavior, your thinking and behavior, excuse me. And our definition, I mean, it's kind of similar along the same lines, but it varies in the sense that our definition of emotional intelligence is our willingness to identify, understand, process, and apply a personal response to enhance the connection or disconnection of a relationship in real time. Not digging deeper holes, but building steps to agreements which benefit each party involved. So um, our definition, <clears throat> obviously we felt it was important that you have to have the willingness. Like we, we, we thought to emphasize, you have to have the willingness 
to want to identify the emotions. Because I think there are a lot of people who understand the emotions and have a clear understanding of the emotions, but they don't have the willingness. We get lazy at times and we just want what we want. And we, we're not even trying to use our intellect. We're just trying to use the emotions to get what we want. And obviously we use to connect or disconnect because when we're disconnecting, we tend to, you know, tear up and rip up everything that we build. You know, we have our relationships, we rip them up as if, you know, that person or those people didn't mean anything to us and they did. So even when you're trying to go your separate ways, it's important to actually maintain the health of the relationship, meaning that you go yourself a separate ways, but you actually keep the actual relationship that was built into, you can keep it in, in the forefront of your mind. So you put that and you allow yourself to, you know, disconnect, have, the dis have a discussion and do it in a way where both people are respectful, both people understand where the relationship is, is, is ending and, you know, y'all both can respect each other when y'all leave the relationship. So, you know, what do y'all think about that? Well, I would like to quote Claudine on Facebook said that she, does, she doesn't agree with the term emotionally intelligence. She sees it as emotional awareness because sometimes people allow their emotions to supersede their intelligence. Definitely. Well, yeah, that's the component of it. Being self-aware is one of the most important components of emotionally intelligence. It's, it's you know, Aziz and I were just having a conversation the other day about it, and it's it's not just about knowing about you it's really knowing about the people that you're dealing with and yeah. being able to communicate in real time as as he said to make sure that you are not allow not leading with your feelings but yeah. le leading with the principle of belief i mean and then the, the intelligent part is it's mm -hmm. it's taking your it's like leaving your body and actually using your intellect to truly understand and dissect the emotions being aware of the emotion and the intellect is the studying of the emotion. So when you study in versus being aware, you understand, like we have kids that are aware of emotions, but to actually study and be able to apply them in real time is, is the, you know, is what we all have a hard time with at times. Well, yeah, it takes really being the, oh. Go ahead. We can... No, it's just that my, my, my internet, I'm a little delayed actually. Okay, go ahead. I hear you. But, Oh, it takes being the adult in the room, basically. It takes making sure that it takes making sure that you're not that you're aware of certain things, but you're not having tantrums or shutting down or not being able to hear what the other person is, is saying. Because I think that's what happens a lot of times too. When you're in a conflicting situation with somebody, you tend to hear what you want to hear. Definitely. You filter out the good, the bad, or whatever. Or if you believe if, if, if you believe something is so, that's what you're thinking. It doesn't matter what the other person's saying. It all leads back to your belief. So being emotionally intelligent, also being aware of what you truly believe, like even the stuff that's not on the surface. Because that's how we, that's how we fight our battles. That's how we, um, we, we, when we're when we're defensive, that's where we go. We go to we dig into it. We we go into the place of what we truly believe, and that's what we're fighting for. So it's really it's really important to be mindful of that as well. And I think most people are not really mindful of that. I wasn't always mindful of that either. I used to, it, everything was kind of surface level, and I kind of dealt with things on a surface level, not realizing that deep down inside I had the belief of something deeper, and that's really what I should have been addressing, not what I was feeling on top. Definitely. Does anybody have anybody else experience that as well? I mean, it really deals with we, not 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 me, but we. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I, I think. Say, I was yeah. just gonna say quickly, like when it comes, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can oh, hear okay. you. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. You can hear me now. Yeah. Yes. All right. So just when it came to the definition, like I don't think that just because we happen to necessarily, at sometimes there's gonna be times where we might. Um, react with our emotions, but I believe that when someone is emotionally intelligent, they're more emotionally intelligent 80% of the time. Like nothing is going to be 100%, right? But in a hungry behavior, it's what we are the most. So I might get mad once or twice and allow those emotions to override me, but who I am generally on a daily basis speaks to my emotional intelligence. Well, I, but I also think that, that when, when we talk about emotional intelligence, because I most I don't know if anybody's ever read the uh, book Emotional Intelligence, and I've, I've read it twice, and I think I've kind of reminded myself of it when we talked. 
it really hones in on a lot of the, the fact of that awareness is the key, like awareness of your emotions and what they are. Because like Jerry said, you can have, you can be feeling one way, but actually not be aware of why you feel that way and be responding in, in really in ignorance because of what you feel. You can be feeling sad, but not know why you're sad. And so when we say um, emotional intelligence, we're really talking about the ability to discern why you're feeling what you're feeling and be able to understand what the actual, you know, what the actual emotion is really, you know, what it really is and not just um, reacting from a, from a place of, um, you know, un misunderstanding or why you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, but you don't know why you're angry or why you're, you know, why you're mad or why, why are all these things happening? So you really, it, it really, awareness is really the key. To, to, to emotional challenges, being aware and having the time to sit down and reflect on why you're, why you feel the way you feel and understand that process of emotions. I think it's also your, you should also be able to articulate why, right? We can know why when we're thinking by ourselves, like, Hey, you know, I, I, I get what I'm upset, but you should be able to also articulate to whomever you're speaking to in the same sense, like this is where it stems from. You know what I mean? Just to add on to the same Barry, because of course awareness is like key, but it's also being able to transfer that relation or the understanding to someone else. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes it's it's very hard when you know what you feel inside and you know that you're expressing that to that person and that person is just not understanding you and getting to you and you get frustrated. And sometimes I think that's where the, the anger builds up and it explodes when you're having an argument. Yeah. So like, I, well, like Aziz said, you know, that's being lazy within the relationship, right? So a lot of times, you know, when, you, when you're when you arguing with someone or you already go on with the idea that the person's not going to understand, you, you you don't spend as much time on it because you don't, you don't want it. You think it's wasted time, right? You don't want to deal. And, and sometimes you do spend the time on it and that's when the argument, you, you start to get angry and angry because you explain it to that person a hundred million times and they're still not getting it. Well, you, you, you know. I think that when you're, when you really understand something, you're able to, to, to uh, explain it in the simplest of terms. Um, and sometimes you also got to think about, um, you know, uh, does this person really want to understand it? Like, what Bear. is this a mm -hmm. reciprocation of, you know, effort? Or does this person, is this really person really opted out of this conversation? Mm -hmm. like, that's mm -hmm. what it really is. Not that you're not expressing it clearly. It's that the person isn't interested in knowing. Or in understanding. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like, you can be emotionally intelligent, let's say, but the person you're speaking to might not be on your level. You know what I mean? Which automatically there's going to be a conflict there because you're in a place where you're aware of your emotions, you're aware of what's going on, you understand where it comes from, and you're able to articulate it, and another person is in a whole other place where they're being reactive. So, mm -hmm. you know. Well, yeah, but to, to, to Mahogany and Jasmine's point, we would all love to believe that we explain things properly, <laughs> but we don't yeah. always do. So I can say, like, it, I can say, I, you know, I've been talking to this person till I was blue in the face, and they just don't get it, and say I'm, I'm replaying the conversation to my friends or to another person. And they're like, but you wasn't really clear. You know what I mean? And we're not all, when we're heightened, when we're in a heightened state and when we're frustrated and when we're leading with, with, with our feelings instead of, uh, instead of concrete beliefs, sometimes our thoughts don't come out the way that it should. And sometimes what we're saying is not, doesn't really all make sense. And we sometimes have to take responsibility for that. And in, my experience when I deal with other people, if I realize that there's that disconnect or break, you know, I, I, I take a second to say, do you understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? To see, like, to get them to, to repeat, especially, I would say with my daughter, my daughter is like number one, right? Like sometimes we talk and we're not speaking the same language. So I have to ask her to repeat what I'm saying. And I do get frustrated at times because you already know with, with, with teenagers, they're already shutting you down. Mm -hmm. Like you open your mouth and they already like tuned you out. So. I ask her to repeat what I'm saying, and based on her response, I could sometimes gauge whether I was as clear as I could have been. So sometimes, like, as much as we think we are, we're not. So it, it's important to, to, to also gauge how clear you are by asking those questions with, to the other person. It may not be that they shut down. Maybe they're just, sometimes, you know, when we're trying to explain a point, we take the scenic route, <laughs> or we're straight to the point. So they could be like, you just 
said so much right now. Like I tuned you out after the third paragraph. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or you, or I lost them somewhere in, in in my words. So we we need to. We're not always articulating things properly either. And like Selena said, she said that this is a logical thing. Most of us re- first reaction is to just deal, just have to deal with the consequences. So you just jump jump right in. Yeah. And you're not thinking solution. So. I think the biggest component to being emotional intelligent is never losing focus on the, the destination, never losing focus on where you're trying to go. If you're trying to find an agreement, then that you're working overtime to find that agreement. But if you're just trying to be validated, that's not emotional intelligence, that's ego. And mm-hmm. we need to really truly understand the difference. You know, like if you never lose focus that we're trying to meet in the middle, then that then both people are on the same page. That's why we, we always say equal and healthier relationships. Because equal, you have to first believe that you're talking to an equal. If you're not talking to an equal, you're gonna, now the relationship is always going to be going to an abusive state because you're gonna talk down to them. You're not gonna have the patience. You're gonna lose your mind. But if you always realize you're talking to an equal, then it's very important to understand this person's receiving what you're saying and their destination is the same destination. Whether y'all on separate sides of it, y'all not trying to walk parallel, y'all trying to work, walk together. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the, the gap gets closer closer together. Well, I That's why I believe that uh, awareness is like the foundation, you know what I'm saying? Like awareness in itself is not intelligence because you can be aware of your emotions, you can be aware of what caused those emotions you can even be aware of having an illogical response be based on your emotions. You know what I'm saying? You can be aware that you're acting petty. You can be aware that you're, that you're not acting civil. You know what I'm saying? But that awareness is just the foundation for the intelligence. The intelligence is supposed to lead to wisdom, which is proper application of that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? If I have the wisdom, I can say, well, I'm angry right now, but I'm not going to act and give an angry response. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to, hold myself together and not be petty, not be, you know, so on and so forth, you know? I agree. Yeah, well, yeah I agree with that 100%. You have, if they're not getting it also, you have to maybe take a break and like say, listen, okay, you're not getting it and I'm getting frustrated. So can we come back to this situation? Because sometimes as all you need is a break from the conversation. Not saying that you would never get back to it, but don't let a long time pass before you do get back to the conversation at hand. So sometimes stepping back a little bit works also. And take a breather and relax and then come back to the conversation. I agree. I'd like to interplay. Um, Aziz actually um, is something I took from you. Um, in, in regard to defining terms with conversations, even in heightened situations. Um, first off, I, 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 I likely now like take the time before I get to, I'm, I'm not gonna discuss things when it's here. I like mm-hmm. to allow a little bit of, you know, that energy to, to come to a, a even place so that we can actually hear each other and receive each other but also I start defining terms immediately. So I like to make sure that we're speaking the same language. I want to make sure that I'm saying exactly what I, what I mean with each, with the words that I'm speaking so that it's not like passing them by and we are, I'm, I'm making sure like, um, are we on the same page? When I say this, do you understand this to be this? You know what I mean? So that I know you define these terms in the same way as I define these terms. So as we go along in this conversation, I know that we're speaking the same language. It's easier for us to, you know, come to a common ground that way. Definitely. You have I also think. Go ahead, Barry. I, so I was also thinking that in 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 talking about emotional intelligence, that means also working on your communication, your ability to communicate um, what those emotions are and what you're feeling in a in a clear and concise manner. So. You, you like you, you can be aware of something, but like like we've been talking about, you, you still may not be able to actually articulate what it is that you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. Um, well, I think we've all been in conversations where the person starts off talking about how they're feeling and then they're, they start in one area and they end up 
totally over on this other side and you're going, I don't follow where you're going and why you feel what you feel because you you lost me. And so I think also making sure that you work on communicating what it is in, a, in, in what it is that you're feeling because you understand why you feel that way and what the emphasis is, not all the different emotions that you're all feeling, but why you truly feel that way and what you're addressing, um, um, what, what you're actually trying to communicate to them. Like, what is it that you're trying to get them to understand? And making sure you, that you're aware of that as well. Okay, go ahead, Christine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted to add, hi, guys. Here is my yeah, uh, eye surgery and all. I actually can't see a thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> for about a month. I hope you feel better. But, so when Jerry was talking about kind of, and it's kind of come up a couple times, I'm thinking about it. And we call that, um, we call that fire hosing. So, and that can even happen in a situation like this, where it's just like, it's so much information that your brain is trying to keep up, but especially when it comes to a loved one and information you don't want to miss, right? So I think a couple of you guys mentioned that where it's like, uh, I thought we were talking about, you were mad that I didn't bring home the, you know, eggs and all of a sudden now we're talking about, and you're crying and like, I have no idea what's going on. Right. And and that can be really hard to follow. And I think for, so I call that, I call that fire hosing, like literally like just taking the hose and just like so much information is being blasted at you that you can't even stand, stand up and let alone respond. So part of that flooding, but also um, a fun trick that I like to use. I mean, I wish I used it all the time myself, but if your heart rate is above 100 beats a minute and you're not exercising, you are actually flooded with cortisol and you cannot think. And so my favorite examples of this is like, you know, the, you're in a fight and the person's like, when have I ever done that? And you're like, I know that you have, right? But I can't tell you right now. And then, and then 20 minutes goes by or you take a walk or you take that break and you come back and you have 15 examples. And you're like, you know what? It was Tuesday. It was last Saturday. It was right. And with that emotional intelligence, I think that the funny part is, number one, identifying why I'm upset. That's a really hard thing to do. And, and one thing, you know, it's like, I don't think we should come to a problem until we actually know, because like you guys are saying, if it's not solution oriented, it's complaining. Mm -hmm. And nobody really likes to be criticized. And if you don't actually have a specific complaint with a solution, now you're blaming, you're criticizing, uh, and then I'm feeling bad and, and you're not giving me any way to, to get out of that. Right. You're, you're not, I don't have a get out of jail free car. I don't have a solution. It's not like, Hey, um, you know, I had eye surgery and you weren't there and this is how I would, I would have liked you to show up. Maybe you can do it tomorrow. That's a total, like, I feel bad. You did something. Here's a solution. Here's a date. You can make it up to me. Right. If we come to that, then most of us can, our anxieties can start to go down too a little bit. Like, Oh, yeah. Okay. Fuck. I, I screwed up and maybe tomorrow I can do better. But when it's just like, you never, you always, I, um, you know, needs are never met. And then, and then that flooding too. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also, it's also about truly understanding your partner because we all, you know, a lot of us, I'm sure in this panel, we, our, our first language was slang. So always don't mean always. Yeah always means most of the time right yeah. when you're talking to somebody that always and we all understand that the only time we truly nitpick is when we are at a disadvantage right but before that we understand that the person doesn't mean always they mean most of the time they're not assassinating your character and saying this is who you are all the time but they're saying this is who you are most of the time but i think the most important thing about being emotional intelligent it's not something that a lot of people are so we we, we, uh, we, we look at a lot of relationships and we look at a lot of other people's relationships and we go off of that and say, well, this is what emotional oh, intelligence like is because mo this person and this person and this person and this person. And when you look at it, it's only about 5% that's truly emotionally intelligent because the intelligence have nothing to do with the emotions. It has something to do with remembering that it's two people in the relationship and there's a destination we want to go to. So that's the most important piece because everybody's always saying you're entitled to your emotions, but if we're constantly feeling emotions simultaneously, whose emotion trumps whose emotion? Yeah. How do we, how do we decipher that in real time? 
because we're not getting the tools. We're just getting all of these quotes on how, oh, you know, be catered to their emotions, understand their emotions. Be, but whose emotions? Because we're all constantly feeling emotions at the same exact time. So to be emotionally intelligent is putting, using the emotions to get to your destination. What need do you want met? Is your need, is it a need, is, is your want superseding somebody else's need? That's how you decipher the importance of the, the emotional state. Who's at a more alarming state? Because if that's the case, the person who is super emotional is going to always take center stage in your relationship. Yeah. When it should be the other way around, the person who is more logical should lead the relationship and should take center stage and should be the, and should be the platform or the, the, um, the bar of where everybody should be within the relationship. So that's why we always say it's important to have equal relationships. But at the same time, how do we decipher between emotions constantly contradicting? I feel the relationship is going well. You feel the relationship isn't going well. Because you feel the relationship isn't going well, your, your feeling supersedes my feeling of relationship going well? You see, it's like we always have to really, and then that's where as humans, we, we deal with reason and evidence. Then we start having a dialogue to see what's actual because we're living in our heads at that moment. We're not on the same page. So we're well, not on the same page, we're in our heads. Well, yeah, well, I'm glad that you, you brought the back around to um, living in our heads because the thing that Christine said about you should only, you should only bring something up Right, I don't want to misquote you, but you should only bring something up. It, it, you should only bring up a problem if you're ready to, if you have a solution, if you can really articulate why you have an issue. But a lot of times, I like again personally, I, this has been an issue of mine in the past where I had a I had an issue with something, I couldn't really articulate it, so I pushed it to the back, and then I kept pushing it to the back, and I kept pushing it to the back, and to use your term, I was I, I was took I took my holes and was just like drowning everybody because I. I couldn't really articulate it, and so I, I, I kind of blew up. So I do think that you shouldn't just complain, right? You should go into any discussion wanting to have a solution. But if you're not truly clear on why you're thinking what you're thinking or you're feeling what you're feeling, I think you should just start the discussion anyway because it starts the discussion. So you can have the other person say, you know, I don't know where you're coming from right now and whatever the case may be, like you, you're, you're seeing things that's not even happening right now. But it also starts the discussion and, and, and through that discussion, you can still filter out your thoughts, your concerns, and that way it won't continue to build up and then you blow up. So I'm curious about something. So one of the ways that I handle that is, um, cause I can't always articulate either, right? I don't always know. So I usually kind of like call like my best friend or, or kind of phone a friend and I tease it out with them first. So that by the time I have the relationship with my partner, it's, a, it's at least a little bit more dialed in. I have a little bit more insight and I, I can communicate that. What do you guys kind of, what are your thoughts on that? Kind of having those, those kind of safe people, those loving people where you can go, hey, I just need to tease this out. I'm feeling really frustrated. It could be because like what you're saying too, Jerry, uh, how I feel is, Sometimes it's a culmination of things. Plus, I'm a female. I'm hormonal, right? Every seven days, I have a different cycle of hormones going through my body. And sometimes I adjust well, sometimes I don't. Stress, kids, relationships, right? Like, there's so many things. And then maybe my partner does the one thing, and that's what sets me off, and I feel comfortable with them. I can't lash out to everyone else, but I can that person and feel like I could be forgiven. But that's not always the safest place, right? Because eventually that, that lifeline runs out too. They don't want to always take the blame or the brunt or get the, the heavy hit from everything that's going on. So I try to tease it out with like um, somebody I trust. I mean, and I can just say that to my girlfriend, like, hey, I just need to say this out loud, tease it out, you know, and, and things like that. So getting the conversation started, but not with the person necessarily, like really getting clear first. I, I'm just curious what your thoughts are or experiences with that. I think that's, that can be, I think that's definitely a healthy process, but yeah, if I agree with that. you and your partner are in agreement on that because it is, you know, it is explaining your, your quote unquote business. If it's your partner, if it's your friend, if you're a friend and you and your friend both agree on it, I think 
it needs to be an agreement before it's executed. So when that person's information is being put out there or how you're feeling is being put out there, the person already knows that that's your process. I part think two, I really yeah. like Thanks. Part two, um, I think that having a mediator is still looking towards the solution. If yeah. two people are on fire and y'all not hearing each other, yeah, I would say employ a mediator ASAP. Employ somebody y'all both will feel will be impartial. Y'all both feel will get to the bottom of it. And you employ them and you call them or you do what you have to do and get that mediator. So everything, the levels, the, the energy, everything drops down where y'all can both actually listen to one another. But again, y'all both have to agree on who's going to be the mediator. Y'all both have to agree. You know, everything's about an agreement. Everything's about coming together. And I'm talking about not just romantic partners. I'm talking about when it comes to friendships and all that. You need, you need a mediator. Make sure y'all have a mediator in common that y'all can go to and, and, and bring it down. But the whole thing is never losing track of the common goal. Like we could read the defin our definition again. Emotional intelligence is our willingness to identify, understand, process, and apply a personal response to enhance the, the connection or disconnection of a relationship in real time. So to be clear, what that means is you have to be willing. And all of a lot of us, we know when we're not willing anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Like we always talk about how intense we, we argue, but that's when the passion is still there. Can you really look back at your, when you refuse to argue with that same passion, can you look at where you are in your relationship? Nine times out of 10, you dialed out. I never knew too many people that were passionate about their partner that w weren't in heated arguments because everything about that connection means something to them. So we have this taboo of, yo, you shouldn't argue. And me and Jerry came up. No, you shouldn't bicker. What's Bickering the is the problem. It's when it's they, 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 you're just poking at each other. Mm -hmm. You're not getting anything accomplished. Arguing just shows a passion. It just shows a level of passion. It shows a level of investment. So you're invested in it. And we never tell people don't argue. We tell people make sure you know the destination and never lose track of the destination when you're going forward. So go ahead. <laughs> That's true because for me, when I was going through it with my ex-husband, we used to fight all the time, all the time. And to the end of our relationship, it's like, I don't even care. Definitely. Fuck you with yourself. I wouldn't even talk to him. Look his way. I'd just go in the other room because I know I was done. There was nothing left. You know, so I agree with that. When you argue in a relationship, either family, friends, you know, significant other, you want them to understand and feel what you try and, trying to, to come across to them for them to understand and vice versa. And if you're, you're checked out, it don't need to argue. It's done. I don't think emotional intelligence is trying to get somebody to, to understand, uh, to feel what you feel. I think it's trying to communicate there's a concern and that you're trying to also communicate there's a, and trying to work to a resolution. Exactly. So there's something that I'm, that, that calls that makes me feel a certain way. And I, and it, you know, and you're, you're the, you're the source of that. And I'm trying to communicate how you make me feel or how this action is making me feel and how we can resolve the issue. It's the self-awareness of, 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 of it all and stuff. And so, and then working to actually try to get to a place of understanding. Cause a lot of times is that it's, I think the tendency that like when we, when we call trying to communicate is really, we want somebody just to validate what we feel. Mm -hmm. Just, you, you don't understand, you don't understand. And I'm like, and you know, you can be asking, well, I don't understand what you mean. What is it that you're trying to get me to understand? And what is it that you're trying to get me to actually, what are you trying, what are we trying to resolve? Cause I like, I think a lot of times it's just, you know, you're, you're venting or you're dumping or you're, you're, like she said, you're fire hosing because you're upset about all the lot of different things instead of really pinpointing what it actually is. The issue is and actually working towards the re resolution of the actual problem. And that's what real emotional intelligence is. It's not just saying, get you to understand how I feel is, is I'm, I'm expressing the concern or a feeling and I'm, I'm wanting to work with you to actually get a resolution to it. Yeah, I have um, 
I have a problem with a mediator. Going back to what you were saying before, Aziz, I, I, I truly have a problem with a, with a mediator because maybe it's my mind, but anytime that I try to get a mediator, that I've tried to get a mediator involved, I've always thought that that mediator might have been taken, not been taken my side, and I could have been, I could have been wrong. Okay. But um, just have a hard time with that now. You deciphering bickering and arguing. I, I I like that. I like the definition of that. Thank you. How you can trust with that? Definitely. You Definitely. understand when we said mediator, we said somebody we be, we both believe are impartial. We made sure we said that that's impartial. So when they tell you wrong, you're not like, well, that's not who I want. You agree <laughs> to that person because you believe they'll be impartial. I, I I you know I definitely understood where, where you were coming from. Definitely. So, so the impartial person would be maybe somebody that we pay for to go see. Definitely, whoever it is. Like we're relationship builders. So we can right. serve as people that are impartial, right. right? We're not taking sides, we're just seeing right. the solution, the problem and trying to solve the problem, right? I, so I believe, we, go ahead, I'm sorry. There's no male or female or female or female. Like there's so many relationships that we actually build with, you know? so. We can't just say it's a male thing. We can't just say like, we, we come in understanding what's the problem that we wanna, where's the destination? <laughs> and our job is to help them accomplish that destination. You know what I mean? To get to a place where they look in the mirror and they're like, I feel like I can actually be in healthy and equal relationships. So <laughs> when your relationship is not in a healthy place, you know what I mean? Then you're not utilizing your emotional intelligence because like what Barry was saying, it's not about me putting on, me, me expressing what I feel. It's, a, it's about me telling you what I feel, you telling me what you feel and us finding a way to still have we. The destination is always we. And if you lose track of that and start doing me, 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 uh. then the emotional intelligence went out the window because it all, always deals with we. And, you know, to go back to the awareness portion of it, we get stuck at, a, we get stuck at awareness. You know what I mean? Awareness is the, the, the first thing. Self-awareness is the, it's the first thing. Having an understanding of where your emotions is coming from. Right. The intelligence is having the ability to articulate and apply and take in what the other person's saying and connect it with what you're saying to find a resolution. That takes the logical sense of it. That takes, awareness is just being aware of the emotion. Identifying makes, it. Makes Trying sense. to understand it within yourself. But it's, it's something further than that. That's why words are used intentionally. Because we all can, do, awareness is a spiritual word. We always say, we try to stay away from spiritual words because they mean something different than something to so many different people. So you always want to use concrete things that we both understand, we both have a clear understanding of. Awareness to, to her might mean that I'm just, I'm just aware of it. I'm aware there's a car sitting there, but I'm still gonna walk out in the middle of the street. The intelligence is not to walk out in the middle of the street because you're gonna get hit by the car. That's yeah. right, that's right. That's what the difference is. Supplying the fact that you're aware. So, you know, I think this is a very important discussion. I mean, if anybody hasn't shared this discussion yet, please share it on your Facebook page because a lot of people need to hear this discussion because we need more emotionally intelligent people out there. We need greater relationships out there. There's too many people we run into that's always discussing how bad relationships are and how they're hindrance and how they don't want to put in the work and the time. And they should save you time and they should help you grow. And we need to start looking at relationships in a better light, but we need to find equal people. We need to stop trying to go in relationships, changing and helping people when we need to be with equals that we know can assist us and support us, but they're not trying to help us because they're equals. They're nurturing us. Well, and like, we're nurturing you, them. That's what I was gonna say. Well, well like, oh, who's talking, sorry. That was Jasmine. Oh, God. I was just gonna say, just, just quickly, like that's, one of the things that I'm getting from the conversation just in general is that it's so important, like, you know, when we're going on our first dates and our second dates 
and um and and you know you're paying attention you're like there's so many things to talk about there's so many things to define that we take advantage of and we don't we just can to- like we totally bypass when this conversation is completely important because i need to know who the hell like who am i dealing with you know how how emotionally intelligent are you and this is how most intelligent i am and this is what i can bring to the table and you know we need to be aware before we even get to that place where we're going to debate or argue or whatever what i should be expecting from you you know what i mean so it just adds on to my list of these are the things i'll talk about on my first date not sit in a movie theater and not talk about shit, nothing but you know this is another thing that's important that people often don't realize how important it is well yeah it's one thing to sit to, to sit across somebody at dinner and talk about who you are when you're in a good place right it's exactly. who, who you are when you're angry who you are when you're not getting your way, who you are when you think you're not being heard, who you are when, you know, like who you are when you're not feeling your best. And I, and, and I think that those are the conversations we need to talk about as well. Like I can, you know, say I'm the best person and yeah, I believe in this and I believe in that, but it's all good when there's no emotions, when my heart rate is not at a hundred and you know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm feeling good, but what, what about when I'm not feeling so good? Am I listening? Am I, am I hearing what you're saying? You know what I mean? Like, or am I just, hearing what you're saying so that I could respond. Like, like Christine said uh, on Facebook, she said, you know, it depends on who you're talking to because they, they can just not listen to what you're saying. Like they just want to be, they hear you, but they're not listening. And but, you know, those things are important too. Are you that person? Because a lot of people don't admit that they, they are those people that don't really want to hear, they, they're not really listening, but they, they hear you, but they don't really hear you. Right? Like well, nobody really admits that. How many people have you came across that said like, when I don't feel like dealing, I don't really listen to you. <laughs> you know, I don't really listen. So, you know, it's really important for people to be honest about who they truly are and, 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 and communicate that with the, other, with the other person. Say, you know, when I am in a heightened state, I may have to take a couple of minutes to get it together. Give somebody else choice because somebody, may, somebody else may not want to deal with that. They want to mm-hmm. say, you know what, well, I want somebody who's a little bit more, you know, witted and can deal with me in real time and not allow their emotions to get the best of them. You know what I mean? But yeah. if we don't express those things, if we don't have those conversations, then we're not giving the other person the ability to say, I want to deal, don't want to deal, until we're in, until you're in the relationship and they realize, I really don't want to deal with this. Uh. Yeah, and, and also, too, like, I, you know, I'm not going to name the show, but also a show that I had watched. You know, uh, it brings it back to emotional intelligence because this guy said, you know, oh yeah, you know, what I don't like, you know, um, I don't get angry about a lot of things, and you know, I talk, I, and the woman's like, great, you know, we're both great communicators. You know, their first um, argument, he completely shut down, was giving her one word answers, and I'm like, bro, like, who are you? Because you just said he was a dude who was a great communicator, and by giving me one word answers, is not a great communicator. You know what I mean? You always got to think about the people who, who shut down and walk out. Like, how are we having a conversation and you walking out? Now, if you say, you know, I need a minute, I'll be right back. I just, I feel myself getting hot or whatever. I'm going to come back in like a minute, whatever. But most people, when you see it, and now I'm just speaking about when I'm watching something on TV, right? A lot of shows, whether they're reality or whether they're movies, you see a lot of people walking out. You know what I mean? So it's just like not even being like, it's like not even being real with yourself. It's Wait, being yeah. aware. Like, you got to be aware first got to notice who the hell am I when I'm upset what kind of person am I when I'm trying to when I'm upset and I can't find my words am I somebody who walks out am I somebody who curses you out and don't know why you know what I mean so just to bring it back to what you're saying yeah it's just so important to again be self-aware not just think who you know who you are but really pay attention to those moments when you're upset yeah and beyond that also goes back to um sorry that also goes back to what I was saying about the definitions because like you said, you said, I don't get angry about a lot of stuff. Yeah. He obviously <laughs> defines anger as a, 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 his like, responses ah, versus, yeah. you know, what he's feeling. Because obviously if you're shutting down, you're, it, you're, you're in a space of anger, discomfort, or Absolutely. Something, something, you're feeling something, yeah. you know? Well, I think also that it's it goes back to the the capacity to, to communicate it because I think in a lot of times what we do is that we you know not only do we fire holes but we we in some cases we may gaslight our our partners we may we may put our partners in a defensive mode because once again emotional real emotional intelligence is the ability to communicate it in a way that they understand so 
you know, I, you know, I work in mediation and I work in conflict resolution all the time. And one of the things we talk about is that we don't use you statements. You make me feel we say we make, mm-hmm. we, cause that, those statements tend to create the put people on defense. And so all of a sudden you never do this. And, and is that really true? That's not a true statement because it's not that it's this one thing that you're really dealing with, but what happens is you paint the, you paint them with the entire brush and everything that they've done is now become, become under scrutiny. And so what will most people do, which is what they bag up and say, you know what, wait a minute, it's not the truth. And so we also have to make sure that from a, from an emotional, emotional intelligence standpoint that we can actually communicate clearly, not just blast them up our partners or people that we're in relationship with, 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 with things that are, we know are going to shut down the communication and shut down the ability to actually resolve the conflict. Because if you continually paint your partner as one thing or do one thing or say, you always do that, you're not going to actually resolve the issue and you're not displaying any type of emotional intelligence. You are, you are in, in, in best cases, you're, you're, you're just uh, fire hosing that person with all your different emotions and you've just shown that you're not even emotionally aware of your own self. Well, well, not only that, but now I have to defend myself. And when I defend myself, I'm attacking you, right? So right. when you go, well, you're not listening. And I go, well, when do you, have, you know, and then now we're in a completely, we, we like to call that right, wrong, ping pong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so right, the right, wrong, ping pong. But also going back on something else was uh, for the emotional intelligence is really understanding your threshold for pain, tolerance and conflict. And so I'm also a mediator too. And so I have a very high, I have a high tolerance. Uh, you can really go kind of crazy on me and I'll be like, okay, I get where you're at, but I'm not going to react to that until I get to a certain point, but I have a high tolerance, but other people don't. And I think that if you don't know your tolerance to conflict and to that, that heat of that moment, that pressure and are able to tell somebody that can cause a whole nother set of, of problems. So like, Something that I see is, let's say my issue was, I didn't like how you um, treated me today in this one scenario. Well, that could be a really easily solved problem. But what typically happens is we get off of the main problem. It becomes me and you. And now we have two problems. We forgot about the first one. Now we have two problems or more because we're bringing up the past and we're fire hosing and we're gaslighting or doing all this. And, uh, and then it really does become overwhelming for what, for both people, in my opinion, because it's like, well, I was just trying to say the one thing. And then I think that that also tends to relate to behaviors of fine. I just won't bring it up. And then everybody shuts down and withdraws. But, but I also think that to think that when, Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mark. Mark. It goes back to what, what goes back to what Barry said and, and what you're saying, I think the foundation, like we kept we keep speaking about awareness, that's first and foremost, that's the foundation, right? So when it's the, the and but also the accountability of things like if you dealing with people who are in an accountable state then the use that's the reason why the use uh turn into a dagger because we dealing with the me's not the use we need to understand how how we showed up in that space and that person needs to figure out how they showed up in that space and that's how you know, we come to a common ground on how to, to, to uh, establish different boundaries or ways to show up later. I tend but, to think that we become selfish in trying to get our, 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 our emotions heard. Um, I tend to think that we don't, when we go into, when we go to express how we feel about somebody else, we're not really thinking about the we. We're thinking about this. You're going to hear what I have to say. I got to get my point across and nothing else really matters. And we lose sight of that. This is a we, and because I, I want you to win, because if we're if we're invested in a relationship, the goal is for us to win and walk away feeling like that we were able to understand each other, understand what the issues are, come to a resolution of the issue, and then all of a sudden be able to move forward in a healthy manner. How but do I don't do think that that's how, how do we do that in in the. The, the selfish state. You can't do that in a selfish state. We're doing this together, so we can't forget about the we, right? Correct. It has to be. It has to be a we. So if we, if we're understanding that, and we're speaking about emotionally intelligent, right? We're speaking about having this emotional intelligence. That's a part of the emotional intelligence. Uh, also acknowledging the the state that we're in. We're no longer solo. It's a us thing. Definitely. And so when, even when I'm in 
my emotional space, I need to remember that I'm that this is a us thing, not a me thing. Definitely. We I agree a with totally that. Different take on what y'all saying about the use and the blames and the we 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 truly believe like when you're going back and forth with people that you are personal with, it should be a free space, a free reign. Yeah, so I was just gonna say that. if you're if you're like that, yeah, you could acknowledge that that might set the person off, but when it comes down to it, we're, we're in a space with people that truly understand our intentions. So when we're saying certain things that they, they, we get to a place in our relationships where there's certain things that shouldn't trigger. Like I said you, but we know who you are. We know what we're talking about. So I'm pointing out the fact that you put me in this position. I'm pointing out the fact that you did this. So I'm looking at the accountable portion of it because I know what I did, but we're talking about you. So right now we're focused on you. So it would be up to that person to say, yeah, I did do this. I did do that. But then you did this to make this happen. And then they would say, yeah, I, 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 see, I see where I went wrong on that level. Blah, 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 blah. You're actually holding each other accountable. So we believe in accountable love. So yeah, it does trigger most people. So if you're work, dealing with people in the workforce, excellent advice. Because you're trying to just get accomplished something logical. We're trying, we got a goal. We got a goal we need to accomplish. So we're going to now use more. We, we need to get this structure. We need to stay focused on the goal. But when it's coming to emotions with our personal relationships, yeah, there's going to be holding each other accountable with a you statement or a me statement or I statement. But the whole purpose of doing that should be for we. And that's how you truly understand who your partner is. Like there's nobody that, or your, your friend, there's nobody I'm in contact with. I'm like, they say, like some people curse when they speak. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say, okay, based on what I learned, you're not supposed to curse because that might escalate the situation. No, I know who that person is. I know they're not cursing because they're cursing at me. They're cursing to express themselves. And that's the relationship I signed on for. And that's the person I signed on with. So I truly understand. They didn't tell me they want to change that about themselves. Yeah. So I'm listening to their message. I'm not listening to how they're delivering that message. And that's what emotional intelligence is. It's having a great understanding of how to, where the person, what is the person trying to say? Through all of their differences, what are they trying to say? I'm not a cursor, but she's a cursor or he's a cursor. I know it sounds like I'm saying cursor, like <laughs> it's baseball, but I'm just saying it's, it's, we get to that level where we have to be free in those relationships. Like I want a relationship where I'm with equals, where you're coming at me the way you're coming at me. Something bothers you. Give me the passion of it bothering you. Cause I know your intention is not to harm me. It's to express yourself. You could have just stayed quiet and harmed me physically. You could have stayed quiet and walked away. That's when I have a problem when you're not expressing yourself. Well, I would like to add down. That's the biggest problem for, for us. But I would like to add to what you were saying when Barry, you know, you, you, you mentioned that you shouldn't um, use always, right? But if always is the fact, if you're always late or you're always doing well, something. Nobody's then, always anything, but yeah. No, right. I, I, don't, I don't think everybody's always something. I, I can say, let, you uh, know. I, I, I mean, know, but some, yes, I some people are saying, always Jerry, like, always to us means this, it's in your character. Like it's, yeah, like, I'm like taking off my underwear and putting on yeah. the five, six times a, a week. Like, that's kind of close to always. So, like, we start nitpicking words. Yeah, you start to get in a weird like space. That. We're in a weird space. You know what always means. Like, we all know what always means. So you can you can say, okay, offset your speech. But what, what, it, what happens when you're talking to somebody, like Christine said weeks ago, that knows that she's a therapist, and they're like, don't psychoanalyze me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't use your therapist terms with me. Because every time now you're going into really choosing your words carefully and really, people are aware of that. They're, they're not feeling like they're in a relationship with you. They feel like they're an employee of yours or they're a colleague of yours. Because you're not giving them the raw passion of words you might use on a regular basis where you're passionate about another individual. You get what I'm saying? So there's a whole, I mean, we should, again, this is why we're here. We should choose our words so we're clear, but at the same time, know who you're talking to. Clarity is based on who you're talking to, isn't it? 
Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, just this is a quick like, reference. Like, you know, my roommate. Sorry to cut you off, Jer Jerry. Go ahead. When, when they come in, when they come in, they leave their shoes in front of the door. They do that quite often. So, is it every single day? No. But is it maybe three to five, three to four times out of the week? Yeah, so majority, I can say always. So again, it's not to negate the fact that we should be clear about what we're saying, but track record and who we're dealing with also does really count because if you leave your shoes in front of the door more than you don't, I can say always. You know right, what I mean? but I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. Right, you you know you can look at track record three to five days. What I'm saying is that there's a lot of times where our conversations, especially in in, in conversations I've been in, where the person is really trying to communicate that this is. This, this is happening all the time. And the truth of the matter is, it's not happening all the time. There's yeah. been a, a couple of specific incidents that have happened, or there's a specific thing that has made you feel that way. And so what, what I'm always big on is say, like, yeah, I can understand that. Listen, this is a consistent pattern. And so this is happening all the time. But you also need to make sure that if it's not a consistent pattern, because some people will say, no, I didn't, I, I, this, only, this has only happened once. Well, no, you always do that. No, it's only happened once. And so we're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with yeah. this specific you issue. Need facts and evidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's false. Yeah. You need well, to make that statement false. It's yeah, communication too. It's, yeah, it's communication because if I didn't tell you, like, yo, you leave your shoes in front of the door, like, put them on the shoe shelf. That's why we got the shoe shelf, right? Then it's also my fault because I am not communicating enough to make him aware of what he's doing. So I would also play a part in that. So again, it was wasn't to negate what you're saying, but also I also seen why Jerry said what she said, because it's like, yo, there's but times I, where, you know. But I think what Barry is also saying too, like when you, when you are using, when you're using always, you should have facts, facts and evidence. 100%. If you can't list out why they always are is doing something, then maybe you shouldn't be using the term always. And I know people use words to exaggerate things, right? Like you always do this or you're never this. So I'm, you know, like, because they're trying to prove a point. And, and they're trying to go super hard to prove their point. So they use these words to make it seem like it's bigger than it, it, is. Oh, it is. But sometimes the facts are the facts and you always do that. And you should be able to list out. It should be a thought out argument. You should be able to list out why I'm using the word always. But you should be communicating with people that either they know that when you're using always, you're not exaggerating, you're not being, you're not being dramatic and you, you, you're, you're using facts or right. The, the real re the real issue is you're dealing with somebody who's dramatic and that's really the bigger issue so and that's, somebody, adjust the fact that they're using these words to get what they want without really taking out the time to really use words that actually make sense and have a, a, a discussion without using those words to make it more than what, it, what is. it is definitely and i think that's where that's where the emotional i, I want to call it emotional abuse but i think that's where the whole uh, the 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 conversation tends to go off, off course and it stops being a we conversation about us and how we get back together and it just becomes about you're gonna you're gonna you make me feel something so I need to make you feel something so mm -hmm. the best way I can do it is to bag you into a corner and then begin to and I don't really use work you know assassinate your character but try to basically paint you into the corner where you're def you're on the defense trying to feel like you need to defend yourself and it doesn't help the conversation and it doesn't promote any type of you know healthy dialogue all it does is just keep people on both sides and you're at war because one person simply just wants to make you feel how they how they feel really that's what their intent was going into the conversation it wasn't to discuss the issue it was just you make me feel a certain way and so guess what i'm going to make you feel this way until and so that way you know how i feel and that's not emotional intelligence emotional well, intelligence is being aware of your emotions and being able to communicate it and then coming to like we said before coming to that resolution of we yeah. And manipulation is exactly that. You feel manipulated. You feel like yes. I was taken off of track. My point isn't getting heard. And, and I think one of, you know, um, as Aziz was saying earlier, so because, and the first time I joined this group, it was like, you know, I'm a therapist, whatever. And I said how sometimes I feel like that bites me in the foot because uh, or bites me in the ass, whatever. Um, I, you, we are what we do all the time. If you're a great chef, if you're a chef for work, you can probably come home and cook up a really good meal, right? So, and am I frozen, am I there? No, you're, you're okay. good. Because okay, I thought someone else froze. So I do this for every, all, all the hours of all the days with all the people, all, this is who I am. It's not my job, it is who I am. 
Definitely. I am a great communicator, but I'm also passionate. So when I lose my composure, which does happen, and I never tell people it's not going to, I go, wow, I'm a really passionate person. And it's even happened in sessions before. <laughs> I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it has. People have really gotten my goat once or twice. But then I usually get the talk of, well, you're a therapist and you shouldn't. And then I'm all of a sudden, uh, I'm held to these standards of, um, I'm not human. I, so so you, can, you can put anybody in a corner. I felt cornered because of my great communication skills. I felt cornered because I'm a therapist. I felt cornered when I act like a therapist and I felt cornered when I haven't acted like a therapist. Because if somebody really wants to get to you, they can. If someone really wants to get to me, they can. So in the moment I'm not acting like a therapist, well, that's not appropriate behavior. In the moment I am, well, that's not appropriate behavior. And really kind of this idea of, I love what you guys are saying right now. It's we. <laughs> don't back me into a corner and character stuff. If you truly don't like me, don't be with me. <laughs> because I am all aspects, all the things. I have many different sides, just like we all do. And maybe that day I'm tired. Maybe that day I spent my day as a therapist and now I'm just the irritable, you know, person that needs to go to bed or, or whatever the case, right? But that emotional intelligence piece within the relationship is checking in. I love what you guys are saying, knowing who you're dealing with, knowing their moods, knowing when they have high energy, when they have low energy, and then working with that instead of pointing, mm -hmm. aiming, boxing, cornering, and then creating additional problems when there was maybe just one. Also, too, like, I just need to point out, because Barry had corrected himself when he said he doesn't want to call it emotional abuse. But essentially, over time, if I'm continuously emotionally using my emotions to manipulate you, it becomes emotional abuse. So I think you're, I think you're on track when you're, when you're defining it in that way. I don't think that's a term that you should you're afraid of using. I'm, I'm, I'm just very cautious because I'm not a, I'm not a professional in that, in that rant. I, I, the reason I say this is because I, I, I've had situations where, um, you, you can't get, you know, it's that you, you can't get a word in edgewise, and so you basically re resign yourself to say. I'll just say it. And then you just basically check out of the conversation. And cause it's not, cause you, you can, you can get a sense from the get go that it was not about us. We, it was simply, I'm angry at you and I want to take it out on you. And so, to, and so those are the things that are, that you have to have those discussions about saying, listen, we're, we're, I'm willing to have a conversation with you, but let's make sure that when we, when we're addressing something, that we keep in mind that this is about the we and how do we going to get to the resolution? So I've heard you, I understand you. Now the next question is what, do, how do we resolve it? What is it the next, what is it that you're looking for? Because I've been in conversations before where they've expressed a lot of different emotions and then you go, okay, well, how do I resolve this? How do I fix this? And there is no resolution. It was simply just them wanting to get this off their chest. So that's well, probably that's, the intelligent thing to do in that situation is to check out. That's not always the, the ideal uh, response, but if a person's just, you know what I'm saying, intent on berating you, they're just trying to get emotions ac across, they're just trying to manipulate or control you, the, the emotional intelligent thing to do is to not be manipulated or controlled. You know what I'm saying? Especially but, if you know that that's what they're trying to do, you know? But checking out should, but checking out should never be the, 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 the option. Checking out should never be the choice. Never? But if, if you should, no. if, if you're, if you're just, if you're having a discussion with someone that's not hearing you, then you don't, you don't match emotions with that person. You don't check out. You, you, you basically stand your ground and tell them, you know what, you're, you're not being mature right now. You're not really listening to what I have to say. And until you're ready, this conversation's over. And that's not checking out. That's letting them know where you stand, what you believe in and what you're going to stand for. But checking out should never be the answer. You know what, listening to, you know, what a lot of people are saying here, it's like you go in to conflicts, right? And you already think of the negative of somebody's going to overtalk me or somebody's going to, you know, they're going to berate me or they're not going to listen or they're not whatever. One part of being emotionally intelligent is going in open, not, not, not going in thinking about how the person's going to respond, going in knowing what you're going to say and being clear on what you want to communicate and being open to hear what they have to say, not going in with a negative, like I have so much to get off my chest right now and they're not gonna, they're not gonna listen. Go in knowing that you're dealing with somebody who wants to listen because they want to be able to connect with you. They want to be able to be on the same page with you and they, they're gonna to want to listen. And when we start off any discussion, any, any task with a negative mindset, it never goes well. 
Yes. So you got to go in thinking that it's going to go well. Use your words. Don't think for other people. Don't think if you were on the other end, how you receive the message. And you'll, you'll have a, most of the time you have a better outcome. You can't control the other person. You can just control yourself. And by, and by, by checking out, that should, if, that should never be an option when you know better. That should never be the, even that's if you, that's even passive. If you want to I walk think away, that shouldn't that usually should. be. It's a passive aggressive response. It's just, it's, it's just it depends on the scenario, though. But like, but like I said, that usually shouldn't be the response. However, it's, if it you're dealing with a per- however, however, if you're dealing with a person that clearly does not have we in mind, that clearly just wants to validate emotions, that does not have so that doesn't have is not having solution oriented conversation. Their goal is just to unload a bunch of emotions on you. I'm not engaging with that. But you don't care about but you but you address that. Well, you you say, you know what, I'm not engaging. by you telling them I'm not engaging, I'm not having it, you're doing weight, you're fire holding me, I don't want to be lit up right now. That's not that's checking not- out. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that's saying that you're you're setting the, the, the standard of how you want to go move forward with the conversation. There is a never be something that you should ever want to do. Yeah. There is a boundary that you need to establish from the get go that says very clearly, like, listen, you're we're, you're not discussing this as a we, um, and so you know what? Until we can get, have this discussion as a we, I'm going to step away for right now. And then when when you're ready to have a discussion, we can definitely come back in and have the discussion. But right now, you're not even in the same. You're not really coming at me to talk about a, a you know talk talk in a way that is um, in a way that's going to be helpful and healthy. And productive, you're just simply coming to try to unload. And I, I'm no offense, I, I don't want to be unloaded on. I want to be, I want to be, I want to understand what you're, where you're coming from, and I want to understand how I can help resolve the issues so that we can, we can connect deeper in, in a deeper manner. But I don't want to. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be unloaded on. I'm not going to be used as a punching bag, and I'm definitely not going to be used as somebody that is um, just going to sit there and just. Just take it because we've had, all, at least my personal opinion, I think we've all had those kind of conversations before where we've had to just basically say, you know what, that's, that's enough is enough and we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah, but that, again, to be clear, that's not checking out. You still, you're not, you're not, a person's not unloading on you. You're like, you know what, I'm not dealing with this and walking out. You know what I mean? Like, you should be able to say, you know what, you should be able to explain why you, you don't want to participate in the conversation at that moment because the person is in a heightened state. Like, you should still be able to say that. You know what I mean? Agreed, like, it, agreed. It, it's not. It's not about just like checking out. Means that you you you're not. You don't even want to deal. You shut down. You're and that's the thing about it. Like, how can you ever move forward? If you were treat, like, then both of y'all, both of y'all, pretty exactly. Much, uh, gave up on the gave up on the relationship. Exactly. It's like one person is completely there, and the other person's walking out. It's just like how how can you guys now move forward? Because now if she's loading on you. How and she's not sorry about it, and you walk out. How can you start repairing it? There's not even a standard there for her to even come back and apologize to you, or even think that she owes an apology. It's just like, babe, what you want for breakfast tomorrow? Yeah. And it's like, what the hell you mean? What I want for breakfast? You just unloaded on me yesterday night, and you know what I mean? Or trying to get some booty? Like, hold up. That's not what it's about. We ain't even the same thing. We ain't even trying to talk like that no more. <laughs> well, I think. I think. I, I, I think. I the think the key word is is choice. Mm-hmm. In the discussion, you always want to provide choice. When you shut down and don't talk and don't communicate, you're taking away choice. Absolutely. You're making up your mind on your own. So you're not thinking we neither. So you believe they're not thinking we. So then you stop thinking we too and you start thinking of I. But if you maintain the faith of we, you give them choice. So in saying what Barry just said, in saying what Jerry was saying, and saying what Jazz was saying, it's still like, listen, you're at a heightened state right now. We're not really getting anything accomplished. This must, this, this is the goal right here. This was supposed to be the goal. Because in our definition, you hear we say, even in disconnection, you still maintain the health of the relationship. You still maintain yeah. the health of the dialogue because your integrity should be worth everything. So you don't go and start dumping on people and disrespecting people and closing up on people. Because let's be clear, just because you're not saying nothing, the greatest disrespect is disregarded. Mm-hmm. It's indifferent. Yeah. yeah. They say the opposite of love. Is different. You're not even, you don't even look at them as a, as something worth somebody worth even arguing with. You're just like, mm-hmm. I'm done. Yeah. You're indifferent. So that's the worst thing you can do to somebody. So 
we always watch all these quiet people get passes all the time because they're not the loud people in the room and they come off like they understand you and they're reading your emotion and your responses. Like we want to be clear. Emotional intelligence is not the ability to read somebody's response and give them exactly what they want. That's also manipulation. Yes, it is. It's not well, going to flow for 20 years and losing tolerance for the person after 20 years. And I've been going through this for 20 years. Why didn't you say it the first year? Why didn't you say it the first year it happened? You're not doing anybody a favor. So I think one thing that hit home with what Christine said, where she's like, I got a high tolerance. We use it easy, right? But you shouldn't be tolerating people that you're in personal relationships with. Yeah. Mm. Gonna be about that, becomes that becomes toxic. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Mm. You should be you should be able to walk in a room understanding that you can be fully engaged and passionate with these people. You're not tolerating them. You're forming agreements. You're living life with them. Tolerance is what we do with people that are different from us, but we're not gonna rock with. So if I'm walking down the street and I'm I have an opinion about somebody I really don't like. I'm not going to just be in their face and I'm tolerating them. But if they come in my space, I'm going to say the things that I dislike about them because now they're in my space. The tolerance went away. Now we're building a relationship and then building a relationship in whatever form you have to be honest. You have to be open about the things you like and the things you dislike. So it's not about tolerating. It's more about coming together. It's more about agreeing. It's more about having a passion. You know, so we do stay away from that word. Like, it's a taboo for us. It's like, we, oh, I'm tolerating and I, no, you got a high threshold. But should you truly have a high threshold for BS? Like, well, hold on, hold on. I want to, I want to clarify because that is something I said. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm in court, I'm in court every, I'm in court every week with high conflict situations. Mm -hmm. And 99% of my cases are marriages at the end. So what, what I mean by tolerance is you're not going to arouse me very easily because oh, I'm used to people coming at me at their level 10. I'm used to managing those emotions, calming you down, calming you down, facilitating. So with my skill set, and, and probably a lot like you guys doing the couples work you do, you're used to people coming at you at a 10. They're usually not coming at you like, things are mildly bad. We want to like, <laughs> hey, we're at the end. We're probably going to break up if this doesn't work, right? And so yeah, he's, so what I mean by that is is I do have, I, I don't get aroused too easily. But when I do, it's I'm pretty passionate, right? I'm, I am a 10. And I don't want a relationship i don't choose a relationship where i have to have this high tolerance of bullshit yeah, but at the is. same time if you come at me in a bad mood or with a lot of emotion i'm not going to necessarily get as ruffled as somebody that doesn't have any skill set at all for that and gets overwhelmed immediately so i just wanted to clarify just on my end that, that that is a that's a Do struggle you of mine. huh, huh? I just wanted to ask Christine a question. Do, like you said that you have a high tolerance. If somebody comes at you, you know, uh, passionate or whatever the case may be, they won't arouse you. But my question is, do you check that behavior? Do you say something about it, even though it didn't arouse, uh, yes. you know, an unhealthy response? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm very confrontational. And sometimes things do arouse an unhealthy response for me because sometimes I'm hijacked just like anyone else. So if I can see the train coming, I'm a lot more likely to be able to, to manage that personally and, but if I'm sideswiped and T-boned, I'm just like anyone else. I'm going to be caught off guard on my knees, in my emotional body, reacting out of my experience, my pain, my fear, my insecurity, my protective mechanisms. And, and so that's where that comes in for me too, like I said. So sometimes the expectation I feel like others have for me is that it, you know, I'm always going to anticipate the train coming and sometimes I just don't. And when I don't, my skill set on the other end is just as well developed. So I can be very sharp tongued. I can be very mean. I can be quick to slit your throat with my tongue. You know, I'm very, I'm sharp both ways. <laughs> so I'm really sharp when it comes to the skills, but you better believe that there's the other side of that too. So that's my, that's my, that's my fear. Cause like I said, I am, because in the same profession, I do mediation, but I also do workplace investigations. And so there's a lot of times where people come to our office and they're dealing with, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty triggered already. They're pretty hot. And so 
you know, my generally my skill sets is to is to be try to listen because I'm trying to diffuse and trying to resolve and trying to calm them down because I want to hear what they have to say, and there's a flood of emotions. My my one of the reasons why I'm really interested in this subject is because I want to. I know when me when it when it switches for me, I if 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 it, if if I don't catch it, I'm coming. I'm coming with a when I'm, I'm coming with an assassin sword. I'm going to try to cut you at your throat. And, hmm. and, and because that's just how I think about it. Because once again, I, I'm, I'm not thinking about we, I'm thinking about trying to cut you from every, every way I can hmm. think of. And I've got about 19 different things or, you know, a hundred different things in my bag I'm gonna cut you with. And so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm capable of being in a good space where I'm always communicating with that purpose and with that, with that dialogue, even when the emotions get high. Um, so that way I can communicate with clear dialogue and clear emotional setting, but not also, fall back into the, the, some of the, the old patterns of just like trying to calm them down, but actually trying to understand what they're trying to say, because you're right. There's never going to be a time where someone's going to communicate it perfectly, but I do want to be able to still stay fully engaged and try to work through that process because it is a process sometimes that you got to work through. So you can understand what they're trying to say, what they're trying to communicate to you and um, that you can give appropriate feedback and work to a resolution. Okay, so. Barry, let me ask you a question. Go ahead, um, go ahead, Joe. Barry, in your, in your field, if you're cutting them off with the, these razor blades that you're talking about, and you're, you're at a 20, <laughs> and they're maybe, at, they're, they're maybe at a two, but they're showing that they're at a 15, do you think that's emotionally right? I don't, do I've, I've, in, in, my, in my professional sense, I've never, I've only had to cut someone at the knees once and it was it was because they had went into a place where they had become belligerent and very you know very basically openly hostile to the point where we had to basically i, I basically had to take control of the room and situation so most of the times i'm i'm I, i've already when i know i'm gonna have a heated session with with a in a work in a professional one says there's a lot of prep work to get ready for having that session to be prepared for all the different things I'm just saying for me in an emotional relate in a, in a, in a, in a relationship or partnership, I know that there's a tendency for me sometimes to, to let that, you know, to feel like I need to stay fully engaged. So that way I don't, I don't step into that place where I'm going to come at you because you know what, you, you pissed me off. And so, you know what, I'm tired of you always saying that something that isn't true and you're not listening to either side. You just want to come at me and just say a bunch of stuff and then not come at them because I want to keep the principle of we. Um, that's kind of the, the takeaway point. So, no, I, I've never done that, Joe. I've, I've only had to do it once, but I know in a couple of relationships I've been in, I've come at someone like that because I've, I've just hit that point. But but really what, has ha what had happened is that I had just – instead of setting a clear boundary about how we communicate and keeping that principle, I just simply just kind of done what, most, at least for me, I'm just going to say me, I just got to, got to a point where my tolerance had just, it just ended it. I was done. I, 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 you know what? This is too much. You're about to catch this work and you won't catch it. And I, and, and I ain't going to get off of it until I'm done. Well, you know, we, we, we often do that when we're not ready to leave the relationship. Right. And we're still holding on. So that's the only time that we, we start to kind of, our integrity is not where it used to be. We're still, we, we're not quite re at a place where we want to break up with the person. I'm talking personal relationships. Um, we, we, whether it's a friendship or a, a romantic relationship, we're not really ready to pull the plug. So it's like, you're being mean, I'd be mean. You're being disrespectful, I'd be disrespectful. And just so that you can justify staying within the relationship because you're not ready to leave. So I, I think that that also happens as well, where you are at a place where you know, you're not really honest with yourself about the relationship is really toxic and you're not ready to pull the plug, but you, in order to, in order to, to, to survive within the relationship, you have to, to match fire with fire. But I also think that we don't, we don't, we don't work on this skill set. I think we take a lot of our old habits into relationships. And so one of the things that you do have to, I think one of the things you do have to do in going into relationships is you got to work on this because this is not a natural thing. I mean, you can talk about emotional intelligence all you want to, you can get all the books you want to, but you really have to start developing the habits and practice of what that looks like for you and your relationship. So that way you can break those old habits and not take on some of the ways that you used to stuff. I mean, I, I will say that in, in, in most relationships, we've never practiced this. I know going forward, 
we'll talk a lot, a lot about this and we'll actually work on trying to get ourselves to the process of learning how to communicate with each other when it comes to conflict resolution or trying to express emotions and, 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 and sensitive subjects and having these difficult conversations that are, that are more focused on the we and making sure that we both have work on those skill sets to do so. Definitely. Before, before Jerry, Jerry had, you know, leaves us, leaves us with her, her words. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna comment on what Barry and Christine said. And, you know, Christine was walking around the house when I said this, but you both notice how both of y'all gave examples of the workforce. Mm -hmm. That's where the tolerance is needed. I'm talking about personal relationships. So the workforce has no room in personal relationships. When we're talking, we're just speaking of personal relationships. Because even when you have a personal relationship with somebody in the workforce, do you, do you realize when you see them in the hallway, y'all speak a different way. Mm -hmm. Y'all go at each other a different way. Why? Because it's more comfortable. People even say it seems a little bit more disrespectful. Or unprofessional, yeah. Or unprofessional, quote unquote, but it's because you're personal. And when you have personal relationships, y'all go at each other because y'all know each other's thresholds. Y'all know what's going on. So it doesn't never have to be said. I have a high threshold. No, you're with somebody. Hopefully you're with somebody that's equal, that equally has a high threshold. So y'all both are going at each other and it's okay because it's the way y'all interact. It's the relationships y'all put in, 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 into practice. But having true emotional intelligence is basically like what Barry was saying, we need to work at it. That's why we're here. We wanna have these discussions so people are, are being mindful of working on these skill sets. You know, we, we're, we're, we're intentional with our messages, we're intentional with our topics and all of them equal and, and add up. If you look back and go back and watch each show, you realize that they all add up. And emotional intelligence is really all about being consistent. So if Barry got to go to a 10 and slice, nine times out of 10, Barry was grimy and was holding certain things in, but when he had the slice. Because there's yeah, no way somebody's learning something new in the middle of an argument, unless you weren't consistent. Because trust me, I'm a man that's consistent. And I'm going to say it when I'm even killed and I'm going to say it in the heat of the battle. I have nothing that I can say that you never heard before. And anytime you can go in your bag, nine times out of 10, you've been manipulating the person the whole time. You've been taking inventory. And the whole point is to be transparent and not take inventory. The whole point is to make sure you are consistent and expressing everything you don't like and everything you like on a consistent basis so when it goes, when it's time to argue, you're arguing fairly. Y'all yeah. both understand the rules of engagement. There's nothing blindsiding because that's the quick way to have somebody leaving your behind. I'm telling you, in two seconds, <laughs> they'll never trust you again. Yeah. But Jerry. Take it home. <laughs> take it home. I mean, we have Anyway, to, um, thank you discussion. for joining another great discussion. Um, whoever hasn't shared it, please share it so that if we can have more eyes on it. Um, again, a lot of people could learn from a lot of the feedback and the, this whole conversation in general. Um, but I would like to start with, on September 3rd, we're having our first group session. It's six weeks. Um, it's on our website. So if you go at lovelsgroupjourney.com and to our relationship building page is the first thing up there. So you won't miss it. So if you haven't joined, if you're interested, read the bio, let us know. If you know of anyone who is in need of some extra support, we have one-on-one -on -one sessions, we have friend sessions, we have couple sessions. So if that's something that any of you guys are interested in, or you know someone who could be interested, or anybody who's watching in, um, in the Facebook world, check out our website at, at lovesgroupjourney.com. We have a ton of information up, up there. We also have a media page. We have podcast blogs, messages on the move, and also all of these conversations are archived. And we also have a couple of parents. I know I talk a lot about my situation with my daughter, but you know, I, I luckily have a great support system that helped me through that. Um, so I won't have to pay for a couple of parenting sessions, but anybody who needs that support, anybody who, who, who is struggling, we also have those services. So check them out on our relationship building page. Again, if you haven't shared it, please share. Um, and thank you everyone on Facebook who participated. We have a lot of new members this week. So I really, truly appreciate that. And, we had a full panel today, I think nine people, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so cool. it was a good, healthy, nice discussion today. So thanks yeah. a lot for a lot joining. Of and, people, man. and I'm digging that cup. I'm digging that cup, Jerry. I'm digging that cup. <laughs> oh, Barney. 
Bonnie's in the house. My cup? Yes. This? That's the one. <laughs> okay, thank you. I got it from Odell's. <laughs> Yeah, but we do appreciate it. I mean, this was a great discussion. We really enjoyed it. A different perspective, different point of views. It's always great. And it's so crazy how we can be on different parts of the country and all be thinking the same thing at the same time. I know. It's, it's really amazing, actually. So it's all, this, this, this is all about connecting. All about connecting. So I hope everybody have a great night. Miss you Yes, yeah, you, 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 you just got to reach out. You know, I, definitely gotta do better. Oh. I definitely got to do better. I get busy and then I lose track and then I'll be like, dang, I missed them. And I know, I know I'm looking, I'm looking crazy. I know you said, you said, what do you say? There's not enough hours in the day, but you're not making us a priority. So get it you're together. You're not making us a priority, man. <laughs> I, said it. I, said it. I, said it. I said it live on, on, on Facebook. I'm doing Exactly. It was wow. recorded. <laughs> Y'all gonna play that back for me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good night. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Right, good night, guys. All right, good night, everybody. Oh, good afternoon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.